In this example, we're going to look at an IP inversion using field data set, and this is shown in figure 5.28. So in this case, uh, we need to read in our data, uh, and, and we've got data for this particular problem separated into two files, one con containing the normal measurements and the other containing the reciprocal measurements. So I select the file format to be protocol IP and then I import data and I've got a normal data set here so I read that one in and you'll see I get an apparent residuity pseudo section as well as a phase shift pseudo section and now I'm going to select the reciprocal data set which is this reciprocal.dat I'm going to specify the electrode positions. In this case, we've got 48 electrodes with their two meter spacing. So I'm going to automatically create that. And now I can do some pre-processing of the data to look at this. And um, there are various things that I can do. I can look at the, uh, the reciprocal errors, for example, to try to identify whether there is some parts that I've actually got high reciprocal errors. You'll see down in this lower uh, part of the pseudo section, some values are becoming quite low in terms of their reciprocity. And that's pretty typical because the transfer resistances will be low down there. Um, I can uh, also look at uh, phase filtering. That allows me to remove measurements that contain a, a phase angle outside an allowable range. In this case, I've got a range set to 0 to um, minus 25 milliradians. Um, and there are various things that I can do in here to, to, to try and filter the data out. In this case, I'm not going to do anything with that because the data have actually already been uh, processed in that way um, to remove any, any outliers. Um, I can look at my resistance error model, uh, so I can select, say, a power law here to fit through the data, and then I can look at my phase error model, so I can select here power law to look at this. So this tells me whether the how the error changes as a function of the of the transfer resistance. Um, I can then go to mesh. I can generate my mesh. I'm going to use a triangular mesh here to create this. Um, and then I go to my inversion. I don't need to do anything in inversion settings because I'm going to leave everything as, as default. Mm -hmm. It's taking the error model parameters and going to use those to weight the data. So now I can select invert. In this case, CR2 runs um, and we get uh, an initial misfit of 42. And remember, we've got a target misfit of one for our uh, resistivity problem. And this will run through, again, adjusting the regularization, the alpha parameter to try to get the lowest misfit. Um, it's got a misfit of 5.3 in that iteration, so it's had to move on to a second iteration. And that's shown up on this graph on the top there, showing how the, the misfit is changing with iterations. And we're, we're waiting for that to come down to a misfit of one and it achieves that in the second iteration. And so now it's going to move on to a final phase improvement where it just focuses on, on um, refining the phase angle model to get a phase misfit of one. And you'll see it's done this in this one iteration that it's finished and then we get our plot here. This is by default showing our uh, real conductivity, log 10 real conductivity. Um, I could show that as the resistivity. Uh, I'm going to change this sensitivity scale here. So I'm saying the whole model. Um, and I can look at the phase angle. And this is showing the phase angle here. So um, a higher IP effect is seen lower down, um, and we see this this um, uh, low IP effect in this in this middle zone here. And, and at this site, 10 meters represents the the sandstone boundary, the top of the sandstone. 
and if you look at figure 5.28 5.28 you'll see a, a similar result